here is where we left. We have our shopping cart page. You can add items to our shopping cart. We can get, then go to it, click on checkout, enter some dummy data here, of course, enter a dummy credit card number, enter, well, any valid dummy data down here, and then we can buy this. But currently, what does buying really mean? It means that we're emptying the shopping, car, shopping cart and that we're making a charge. And we can see the charges here in the Stripe dashboard. Yes, I was making quite a lot of test charges yesterday. And here under payments, we can see all these charges. But of course, we're not really storing the order in the database. So we as the seller of the items have no chance of actually shipping the items to the customer we would have to well kind of try to contact him through the data we got on our payments and well that is really a limited data as you see so that's not really the best experience we're getting money well that's certainly good but we're not delivering anything to our customer and the customer on the other hand of course as he's not logged in has no way of seeing the orders on the user profile page or anything like that so that's certainly something we need to improve too so what are the next steps required? Well, we want to be able to actually store orders in the database when the user makes a charge. And we want to force the user to log in when actually checking out. And we also want to show the old orders in the user profile page. So let's work on that step by step. I'll start with the first step of storing orders in the database. For that, I'll go to my code and in the models folder, I'm going to create a new model. I'll name it order. So in the order.js file here, that will be a mongoose model. So I'll copy the product model here, for example, rename it to order instead of product. And I'll of course also change the schema. Now, what should my order have? Well, it should refer to the user who made the order. So it will have a user field, which will be of type type what of type schema types object ID because this field will hold uh, an ID referring to the user object we created here or we create here this user model. So we'll store an ID and we'll let mongoose know that we have a reference here with the ref key and we set a reference to the user model. So with that setup, we're basically telling mongoose, hey, actually store an ID here, but behind the scenes, you should be aware that this ID links to the user's collection and to the user model. So that's our user. We also want to store the shopping cart, which was purchased on the order, right? So here, this will be of type object because we will store the complete cart object. And we can do that in a node or in a Mongo database really good because it's stored as JSON anyway. So storing objects is really simple and works great. And I want to set this to be required. Then I also want to store the address of the user who made the purchase because of course we in theory would need some kind of shipping address, right? This should be a string and also required. And thereafter, I also need the name of the person who purchased this. And remember, we do have input fields for all these things on our checkout form. So this should also be a string and also be required. And finally, I want to store the payment ID. Now, what's the payment ID? Well, it should be a string and required. And the payment ID can be seen on our Stripe dashboard. If we go to payments to see all past payments, and then you click on any payment. You see this ID here, that's the payment ID. And I want to store this ID in my orders collection on each order item, because I want to be able to map an order to, an, to a payment ID here, so that I'm able to see I, this payment refers to this order. This will make it very easy for me to make this connection. So I'm storing that too. With that, my order model is successfully set up. The next step, of course, is to actually, well, create orders and store them in the database. The place to do this is in the index.js file in the routes folder, where I make my charge. And here, of course, in the callback function below the error check. So if I know that I don't have an error. 
So since I want to use my order, I'm going to import it here at the top through the require keyword, import it from the models folder, of course, here from the order file without the file extension. Whoops, like this. And then down here, as I said, after this checking, if we do have an error, I want to create a new order and save it to the database. So I'll create a new variable, which should be a new order. And I'll pass a JavaScript object as an argument, which should well initialize my order. So I'll have the user here. And the first step of course is I need to get my user. Well, that's no problem in theory, because later on I will force the user to be authenticated in order to make a checkout. So right now it's possible to well make a checkout anonymous, but later on I will fix this. Therefore, I will here fetch the user from my request. And now you might say, well, the user, why is it stored in the request on the user field here? Well, Passport does this for us. Since I'm using Passport in this application, whenever I sign in with Passport, Passport will place this user object here on the request. And therefore, throughout my whole application, I can always access this user object. I can also, well, access this to check if the user is logged in. But here, I will later on know that the user is logged in because again, I will implement such a functionality. So I'm fetching the user from my request. Next, I also want to store the card and I'm already extracting my card up here, right? So I can just set this equal to card. Then I'll store my address. And now this currently does not work. I want to retrieve it from the post request, which is sent to this checkout route. But if we have a look at the checkout view here, which is where we issued that post request, we do have this address field, but currently it doesn't have a name attribute on it. So we would not be able to retrieve it from the request. In order to be able, I'll add this name attribute to it. And well, I'll put the name address on it. I'll also give the name input field up here this name attribute and I'll name it name. Well, that are a lot of names, but in the end, I just want to be able to retrieve the value on that input field well on the name field in my request. So I can retrieve the address on my request body because remember request body is where express stores the well values sent with a post request. So I can re uh, retrieve the address field there since I just created this and I can retrieve the name exactly in the same way. So request body name. So address and name here of course are the names I just set up on the view. Finally I want to store the payment ID and I can retrieve that payment ID from my charge object which gets passed here to the callback. Here oops charge I can simply access the ID field. And how do I know that the payment ID is stored in an ID field and not in a field named, let's say payment ID, for example? Well, if you have a look at the Stripe documentation, you will see how this response object, this charge object here looks like. And then, well, there you see that it actually has this ID field, which stores the payment ID. So that's all, just reading the documentation here. With that, my order object is configured and I can next save it to the database. I will provide a callback here and this callback of course will either give me an error or the well result of this saving operation. And what do I want to do in this callback? Well, I want to execute all the code I had outside of this callback here. So I'm not checking for errors here, even though, well, technically it would be better to kind of, well, add if error and then do something here like redirect back to the checkout page something like that, but I'll leave out this for now and just handle the good case here, which should happen most of the time here on our very simple application. But keep in mind for real applications, you would need to handle the errors here. So with that, I'm actually saving my order to the database. I'll again tell you that this will only work if we are locked in. So, well, let's, let's try it. I'll restart my server here, go back to my application and reload it. 
well, add something to the shopping cart, click on shopping cart. And again, I need to sign in. So I'll do this, sign in quickly like this, go back to the shopping cart, click on checkout. And then here, let's enter some dummy data. I'll go to the Stripe documentation to fetch this dummy credit card data here, this credit card number, enter it here, click on buy now. Looks good, but did it actually save something to the database? Well, let's head over to the MongoDB shell client here, which allows me to have a look into my database. I'll switch to my shopping database. And then here on the orders collection, I'll do a find to see all the orders. And as you can see, we actually got a get, got an order here with a user object stored and our card stored where we see we have, well, World of Warcraft, this is what I just bought. We have the price and so on. So yes, the order is stored. We also got the payment ID here and we can verify this payment ID. Let's just remember it ends with VDM7. Let's have a look at our Stripe account payments. And there, if I click on the payment, you see the ID right here. This is the payment ID, which is the same one as we saw here. So all of that is working, but of course you would get errors if we were not logged in. So that's certainly something I need to fix.